Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Zarina with Zarina's Guides. I'm also Blue Rain on most of my social um, Instagram, TikTok. I'm actually Zarina J. Muhammad. That's my whole name. Um, but you'll find me on Instagram and things like Discord as Blue Rain, which is on the screen the way I spell it so that you have that nice and ready to go. This video is for players who are new to the game or thinking about joining the game Upland, which is like one of the best. I think the best play to earn game in the metaverse currently and it's got a great thriving community and so people are also always talking about it and because of that people are like how do i play upland you also might just want to watch this video for tips even if you've played upland already there may be some things you didn't know that you get just from watching this tutorial so stay tuned do check in with a like a comment and do subscribe if you haven't already and let's go ahead and we're gonna jump into it so let's see here. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. I want to give a shout out to Ready Assets. You can contact them. You see that um, right there, ready-assets.me. If you ever get into trying to produce assets in Upland and you don't have any 3D modeling skills, these guys are a great setup where you contact them, you tell them what you want made, and they can get it made for you. We'll go into reasons why that might be beneficial for you as players, but I do want to go ahead and give everyone this news, you know, shout them out, ready assets, scan that QR code to join their Discord, and that's where you can hook up with them to order things. All right, so if you're like me, you heard about Upland through some type of Monopoly analogy. Maybe they said you want to, you know, make money playing a game like Monopoly. Maybe they said you want to rebuild the world playing a game like Monopoly. Whatever the case was, I know that's what drew me in because I loved Monopoly. I loved collecting those properties, getting like a boardwalk and getting people to land on my property and collecting the rent. I thought that was really fun growing up. So this game, Upland, is a lot like that um, where you're collecting properties and you're building up your, your repertoire of collections to get those earnings. And we'll talk about that too. But simply... We're, real, we're rebuilding the world in the metaverse. This is a game where the property addresses are real life property addresses. The NFTs are based on those property addresses. And so it's pretty cool. All right, so the thing that you wanna probably th think about is how do I play Upland? What, what's my objective? What, what do I do in this game? But there are a lot of different routes that you can take and you can combine routes. So those routes are free play to earn, pay and play to earn, collect and connect for for play, build a metaverse empire and become like a metaverse mogul. So let's go ahead and dig deeper into what that's about. All right, first off, if you're a free play player, that means you don't wanna put any money into this game. You want to make it by getting visits, visits, and more visits. So here are some ways that you can play for free. You can do the, you can complete missions, which will give you some epics. So let me back up a little bit. When you're playing for free, it means you are trying to reach uplander status by not putting any money into the game whatsoever. And maybe you never want to put money into the game whatsoever. To reach uplander status, you do have to get at least 10,000, I believe it is, net worth. And I'll, I can't remember. It's been so long. But I believe that's what you need, 10,000 to get net worth of, and I think they, keep, they start you off around 4,500 or something very like halfway there. So imagine you have to put in $5 to reach that if you're paying, but if not, you're trying to gather up enough Upix, which is the in-game currency, to reach 10,000 net worth or enough property worth to reach that worth. So doing this, you can increase your visit fees to collect the Upix, which is, I'll show you guys how to do later. But getting people to visit your properties, you want to make sure that you have your visit fees set to the highest so that if they're visiting your property, that's like they're sending with these little paper airplanes to your property, basically. Every time they send to your property, you collect a fee. And you each, each city has their own like limits for what your fee can be. So there's a minimum limit and a maximum limit, minimum, <laughs> maximum limit at each city. But if you're trying to actually get your net worth increase through visits, you want to go ahead and bump that up. Treasure hunting is also a way that you might try to collect Upix. Um, it's a little bit risky doing it that way because you may actually spend more than you're actually getting back 
initially because you don't know how to play. So there's a little bit of a risk for a new player, but you can watch some YouTube videos. I have several videos out on treasure hunting in Upland and just see how it's done before you jump into it. Make sure you watch videos to know what to avoid doing. Um, and then there's collections, there's collection bonuses that you get. So when you fill in collections for the first time, there's a little bonus of epics they give you. So as a free play player, you're trying to reach that 10,000 net worth because that's when you can actually really start playing the game. Before you actually reach 10,000, all you can do is mint properties. And what that means is you have to, uh, you're a first time buyer of a property that's open in Upland. So minting is your first, first time buyers, right? And as a new player, you actually have an FSA purchasing ability where these FSA properties are kind of like fair housing in the real life. They're cheaper than other properties so that new players can afford them. So you're looking for FSA properties that you can mint initially because that's all you can buy. And then you're going to try to later on sell those properties, but you can't sell them and you can't buy from other property or other players and you can't buy play other players' properties um, until you're actually an uplander. So really all you can do is mint and treasure hunt and try to collect enough that way, earning on your properties that you do get. There's a little bit of a yield earning from them um but not a lot until you do your cha the challenges which we'll talk about later so setting up as a free play player your goal is trying to get people to visit your property really because that's like the biggest the biggest way to get a lot of epics um other than taking risks like i said treasure hunting so those people you have to ask them on discord or in the end game chat tell them you're a new player you're looking for visits you can be cute about it. I've saw someone put like a homeless sign. It was really funny. So you're, you're trying to attract existing players to send to your property, whatever way you can do that. It's up to you. Be creative. But that's the free play way. That's like get once you reach your uplander status, you can start really playing by selling your properties to other players and buying other properties and getting in those deals. But your initial hurdle is reaching that 10,000 net worth. All right, so if you're a pay to play kind of person where you're willing to put in a little money to make a little money, then this route is for you. What you wanna do is for one, make sure you're starting off with a referral bonus when you start the game, because when you start off with a referral, my bonus, referral code, when you start with a referral code, you get a bonus the very first time you buy Upix from the Upland Upix store. What that bonus is, is half the amount that you're spending. So if you spend $5, I'm not even sure they would give you 2,500 epics, but they, I think they, I think they do. I'm not sure if there's a minimum you have to spend, but I feel like they might give you that 2,500, but it's not really a lot. But if you go in and put in, say, $50, um, what that is, it's giving you, you're buying 50,000 worth of epics. That's the way the currency works out. And they're going to give you half of that as well. So you get another 25,000 on top of it, and you'll have 75,000 epics in the game. But be careful with that because if you buy a lot, you might go right away to a pro status where you're like, if you put in a hundred, if you have a hundred dollars or more, or you're a hundred thousand net worth in the game, you're going to be in pro status and you will no longer be able to buy those FSA properties. So you want to watch your net worth if you're trying to stay below 100,000 initially to buy up as many FSA properties as you can. But the bottom line is, is that if you start with the referral code, you get a bonus the very first time you buy Upix, and that's how you get half your Upix, half your what you buy in Upix, and you can start off with like a lot more buying quality, so you can go out there and invest in properties that you think are worth turning at that time. So, when you buy on the USDE side, there is actually a big, um, big thing that happens. So there's like this thing called arbitrage, where people are selling on the USD side their properties, what's called under mint, meaning Maybe they bought their property for $10, but they're selling it for $3. So that's way under mint, right? So what happens is if you buy a property for $3 that was originally a $10 property, um, you can sell it for more upics and go in and say, okay, I'm going to buy this property for $3, but I can probably get maybe 15 or 10,000 upics off of it. And that way you can build up your upix earnings because that that's your net worth. And as you increase your net worth, you level up in the game. And with leveling up, there become a lot of advantages. So we'll talk about those advantages in a little bit. But that's the idea is you want to climb your net worth. And you can do that by buying low on the dollar side and then selling high on the upic side and increasing your net worth in the game that way. There's also just a lot of great deals on the on the USD side. And you're helping out other players when you do buy those USD sales. So 
I encourage people to play with little pay that it's worth buying some properties. Sometimes it's just a better deal that way. So there's no shame in paying in, in your play. All right. So there is that chat chill and collecting your coffee break play. But these are collectors. They're not really they don't care if they sell properties. They don't care um, if they make it to a different level. It's just more like, hey, I'm, I'm, I love these NFTs. These are fun for me. I love buying people's houses in the metaverse. I love that this property has a certain street view. I love that this one's in the Hollywood neighborhood. I mean, there's a variety of reasons that people love collecting Upland NFTs and you can have whatever reason you want. You might be a little bit like me where I'm a collector and I like to play and I like, to, I, like I do a little paying. I do a little bit of it all. But I do have some properties I will not part with. They're just I, I collected that one, those certain properties because they hold some sentimental value, like my grandma's house in Chicago. Um, and there's just like one property that I really wanted to have in L.A. because it's like my dream home. It's so beautiful. So there are like tons of reasons that people might be collecting properties in Upland. And as a seller, if you're a seller, you can leverage those those type of sentimental values in your advertising. Like if you know, hey, um, this property used to belong to Langston Hughes. Well, then some people just might want to buy that property because they're huge Langston Hughes fans. So just knowing like, oh, this is the old home of Muhammad Ali. Tons of people might want to own that home in Upland just because you've attached that illusion to it. So just kind of keep aware that there is that there is a collector's um, play where you can collect, but also keep in mind collectors when you are a seller and what they might be collecting because that's going to be how you better your game and your strategy. Also, just make sure you're having fun and chat, chatting with people in the Discord chat and getting to know other people. That's a lot of the fun of the game. So the whole chatting part is a big component of the chat and play and collect game because you're like really in it for the community and people love the Upland community when we're one of the best communities out here, I think. All right. A really quick word to um, the wise, be cautious about collecting street views and properties that have street tags. The reason is those properties views and tags can change. So you might be like, oh, wow, look at me. I have the Hollywood Boulevard um, or the Hollywood sign in my in my street view. But then the next day you might not. So just kind of be aware of that. It can change Google changes or updates or whatever. Upland actually isn't controlling it. They're using a third party. So I didn't know that initially and I bought some things and I was a little upset when there wasn't the right view. So we'll talk later about those things. All right. The last way you might, you might want to play is because you want to be a metaverse mogul. You want to be building your empire in Upland, uh, establishing a business presence across all the Upland cities where you have stores galore and you're selling for USD. Maybe you're earning USD off of your manufacturing because now there's royalties for that. So there's tons of um, reasons to be a business owner in Upland, I think. But if it's not your thing, you don't have to do that. But for a lot of us, owning a business in the metaverse is really advantageous. So you can, and you can really, you can through these kind of advertise your real life businesses too. So I think it's kind of fun. Um, but if you want to open up businesses, you have to go to the city halls, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, but you have to go to a city hall. You have to have the right type of structure built on your property for this specific type of meta venture you want to open. And yeah, you have to have what you need and you go apply and then you keep, it's been really quick turnarounds. People have been opening up businesses within three days. So if you have what you need and you want to do this, I definitely encourage people to go out there and try opening businesses in the Upland because it's a great way to play and earn. All right, let's talk about this Upland map and when you open it up and what, what's happening everywhere. First off, if you are still wondering about joining Upland and you haven't, I do have my referral code in the description. So you want to join and make sure you get that bonus the first time around, use my referral code. Um, second off, make sure you start in the right city. All right. So when Upland encourages you about some starter cities that may be open when you're, when you start the game, don't take Upland's word for that. I mean, like, yes, those are starter cities where there may be stuff to buy, but they might not be the best buy for you. For example, I started off in Bakersfield. It was not a good city to start off for me. There was not a lot of things happening in Bakersfield. Um, there was better action elsewhere and I just didn't know it. Also, if you haven't started Upland yet, the best time to start is doing a new city release. So if you can hold off and keep up with like the news and new city releases, they happen frequently, I think. Um, enough time to give you time to wait and learn the game and then wait for that city. Those are the best. So we'll talk about why they're the best in just a little bit. 
but start off in the right city. So the way you start off in the right city is ask people. Like you can ask people and you can also check upxland.me, which is like you a site that I think you have to bookmark, upxland.me, upxland.me. Um, you can start there searching through their cities and looking at the FSAs spe specifically to see what is available in the price range that you currently have in Upix. So say you only have 5,000 Upix. Well, you're trying to buy at least three properties in the same city for the first little collection you can do besides a, only one property as a newbie. But having three properties is really advantageous for you because you can fill in a collection and get some bonuses from that. So when you do a new city release, make sure you try to get tr three properties on the same street and be careful about the streets that turn a corner and aren't the actual same address, like a place versus a lane. Those don't count. They have to be the same street, like lane, 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 or drive, drive, drive. Um, so be aware of that. All right, back to this map. Oh, yeah, and I do have a city. On, I have a video on um, new city releases, which I'll put that link in the description. So you can check on that, like, how, what do I do when a new city opens? Um, this video is not going to cover all that too much, but I will give you some tips. So one thing is when you are floating around the upland map, you have this thing called a block explorer. That thing right there that you see with the, the drum setup that's kind of purple, that circle there, that's my block explorer. And the map, you, when you might start off with the globe really far out. And so you can zoom out when you're in the upland map, like by kind of pinching your fingers or using your cursor or whatever. But so if you're really zoomed out when you initially start and you don't know where you are, you can click this pawn over here there's a pawn at the very bottom left of your screen, and that will zoom you right into your location on the map. So if you're looking here at the left bottom of my screen, you can see where it says click the pawn icon to zoom into your location on the map, and that will bring you up to properties. You do have to send to properties to get to them. You don't just you can be floating around, but if you want to actually buy a property, you have to send to that property. And you do that by clicking on those property squares. When you do click on the squares, a property card will come up and allow you to send. When you are looking at your map, you want your border lines to show up. So you can see I have a no border showing, and you can't you can't see where the property line, like the, where the city ends or begins. You definitely want those borders showing if you're going to be treasure hunting. And the way you turn on those border lines is you click the little location map, which is the top icon on the bottom right, and that will take you to see the borders. So you can definitely check out which neighborhoods are around and be able to navigate a little bit better. If you want to zoom out so you can see all the other cities in the upland, you just zoom out and you can keep zooming and the globe will come, become more apparent. And you just spin that globe around to go to see what you want to look at. The settings area is something that you really, is really important for you to find. Um, under the three dots at the bottom of your upland screen is where you guys will find the settings and a whole bunch of other different things, which I encourage you to look at. Um, so let's just go through them. The first one is properties. This is where you can see your own properties that you own. And now there's a filter in there where you can filter by city, and that's pretty awesome. You can also see the missions icon, which we'll talk about those missions more in just a little bit. Oh, no, I think we covered it enough, right, in the free play. Those free play people, you, you, you want to complete the missions. Um, but also there's an explore. And you can look around and see what's up there. But messages, if you have messages, treasures, this is where you want to go to start a treasure hunt, this little icon in there. So do a treasure hunt every day for free. I think that's something everyone should be doing because uh, you can win and you never know what your options are going to be like. Collections tab is under there so you can see where to fill in your collections. You'll make sure you're in the right city. So when you do click on collections, it may have you in a city that you're not located in. So make sure you look at the little globe at the bottom once you open that up. And you can click to go to the cities that you want to go to for your collections. And then you can see your assets tab in there. And that's where you can see all the other things you might own besides your properties. The resources is where you get to Upland's Discord. So it's a really useful place to go. So you can join Upland's Discord where a lot of people chat. A lot of different news is given out on the Upland Discord that you don't want to miss. In the settings tab, this was important because this is where you go to set up your third party applications, but it's also where you go to turn off certain things you don't want selected on your map so that it's not like slowing down your hunting time when you're treasure hunting. So let's take a look. And also, by, by the way, you can see racing's down there. Search for a player if you want to search for a player. Um, the leaderboard, and there's a store, the challenges, football legits. FIFA World Cup, NFL PA Legits, and then your profile, and then the portal, which we're 
we're not into we're not on the blockchain just yet with ethereum but eventually there's supposed to be a way where you're going to bring your ethereum blockchain nfts in into upland and out of upland all right so that settings tab when you go there if you're a hunter there are certain things you turn off because they're slowing down your browser and you want to go as fast as possible so you don't need to see marketplace markers you don't need to see show FSA markers. You don't need to see show other explorers or show ownership celebrations. Those are really annoying. Um, <laughs> so you can and enhance, enhance graphics, turn that off. But you should turn on 3D objects. And the reason is this. There are people who signal to you that they have the lowest send fee um, visit fee. And by showing they have one little map asset on their property. Excuse me. So... You want to look for that, so have that on. But otherwise, you don't need the other things on. But when you actually are new as an FSA player, you do want to have those FSA markers on because that's how you can see which properties are FSAs and cheap for you. There's a third-party um, third party applications tab where you click on that and you can see third-party applications you have. But also, you're going to want to connect some third-party um, some third-party applications for sure, one of them being the AirDrop platform currently where Upland is having people follow and you might get a drop of Sparklet. And there's going to be different um, layer two experiences that you might want to connect. And the way you go there is just clicking on that third party applications, clicking it, clicking on connect the app, and then putting in the code you get from that third party's website. All right. So another thing you can do through the icons on the map, there's going to be this building icon, which is going to be where you can see the prices of the areas um, near you where you're floating over so there's also a little building icon on your on your profile block explorer when you click on it and that'll have a little building as well and that's useful for when you have a new city opening and you're just floating around and they haven't yet opened the city if you want to see what the prices are but if they're showing that city's um, lines are up like their border lines are up you can press this little building bar on your profile and you'll see what the prices are that you're floating around, which is pretty cool. All right, so if you're, check, if you're trying to see what things are in the area, what are they pricing for, this is good for doing comparables. So you can click to see what's selling around your property, like what the prices are directly, and decide where to price your particular property. All right, there's that search bar now at the bottom right. And for those of you who are wondering, oh, is it the magnifying glass? Um, what you guys are wondering, like, how do I find properties or in other cities or things like that or direct addresses you can set you can actually do that by searching specifically like you already know a property's address that you want to find an upland you just put it in there and you can go to it and then if that place is open in upland then you can also look on the assets tab and that's where you can find out like what type of assets are you have and then directory is for sorry and not assets you have assets being sold directories for shops and finding out where those shops are factories and things like that so you can search around over on the other side of my screen i'm pointing out to you the purple dots and the orange dots and the gray dots those little icons those little circle dots are actually to mark stores meta ventures and different other things so the orange ones the orange ones are meta ventures where you can find people selling things like different assets. The purple ones are your dev shops, like your third party applications, like the real note of LA. Um, and the gray ones are like the meta, um, meta, not meta ventures, MM, MM motors properties by upland. Um, they produce things and those are their icons. Another thing you want to look at is the send city hall. That's where you go to when you want to open up your own business, you have to send to the city hall in the city. So, that's where it's located. It looks like that, the little icon on the map. And then there are like little icons for train stations and plane stations and, and bus stations. You will have to travel to those properties by clicking on them and sending to those properties if you want to use the transportation system. Sometimes planes can be hard to find, like super, I mean, the airport can be hard to find because they're actually outside of city's borderlines, like San Francisco's is way down out of it. So just kind of be aware of that. You might have to zoom out to find the airplane that you want to look for or the airport you want to go to. And we do have two different airports. We have an international airport. Well, actually, we have, we're going to have three, but right now we have two. We have international airports and we have our um, 
I guess, non-international <laughs> airports. And then we have the, um, we're going to have private airports eventually where people actually, actually we do. We do. People own them right now. They have their private airport lot, but they're just, we haven't got any planes just yet. At the time of this video, the plane on the horizon. They're going to be released at Genesis Week, which is not too far from now. And Genesis Week is in June, which is like when Upland was released. So it's like Upland's birthday. And it's a super fun time. All right, enough about airports. Your pr your profile card, which I mentioned earlier, you can go to this profile card. Oh, you know what? I just mean, I realized I made a mistake. I was telling you guys to click on your profile card for that Block Explorer building. That's not, a, I meant click on your Block Explorer itself to bring up that other little building that you can get the, um, the property prices that are under you for minting. All right, so now to this, if you click on your actual up left, you click on your profile, your Block Explorer up there in the left upper left um, corner it brings up a card that you can scroll through and see a whole bunch of different information you can see your player name you can see how much your net worth is you can see your status you can see the um your home address all that stuff you can see how much spark you have which we're going to talk about spark then you can see your badges you have you can see how much money you have in your usd balance you can see how many properties you own you can see how many collections you filled um, and you can see also where to withdraw or add funds to your account. So one thing I want to point out to everyone who's new is that you really don't want to upgrade your status unless it's during a spark week, because when you do, you get more spark that way you get, or you get spark for doing so. So spark weeks are announced. And that's when, if you upgrade, like by clicking the, I'm going to go ahead and level up to pro or uplander, they'll give you some spark. So you can see an executive perks. When you make it to executive, they get one spark. But chief executives get two sparks. So that's when you make it to like a million worth of epics. But playing this game to level up is like that's like you know, reaching these statuses has like been like um kind of satisfying in and of itself. Just like being able to actually accomplish raising your net worth in this game. Um, but I want to point out the referral program because I did mention to you guys like you should you should join with a referral code. When you start playing, you want to give out your referral code and have people join with it because when people get a bonus, you also get a bonus. And I want to go ahead and be transparent about that. If you like buy something in the store, I will get a bonus from it. And that's why I do want you to use my code. But also, I just want you to make sure you start off on the best foot. So starting off with a referral code is really good for you. Um, also, you can edit and change and update your home address on this profile core. The reason you want to set your home address is because there's sometimes benefits associated with doing so. Um, for example, when people are trying to build a, or create a collection out of their node, a node is an area in uptown that people decide together as players they want to build up by building buildings and structures and having a community around that area. Well, those people might they can work together to build up the, the area and make it a collection in Upland. Um, but people have to have their home address set to that area. So that's why people might want you to set your home address. And so go ahead and make sure you do set your home address. Um, when you find a property that you like and a neighborhood that you want to call home. Um, also, you can check to view your Uplander status by clicking view Uplander status and you can go check your stuff on the on the blockchain. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is what you do here. So Sparklet, I've mentioned a few times, like here's your Spark balance or, you know, you can get Spark this way. Spark is actually now called Sparklet. And it's a value commodity because it's actually how the assets are manufactured in Upland. Um, and eventually it's also going to be how things are built for interiors. So if you want a car built, um, it's, or not if you want a car built, if you want a car fueled in the future, you may have to use Sparklet. Um, but if you want to manufacture a cart, you do have to use Spark. And I imagine when they open up people being able to manufacture cars, you will have to be able to use Spark is my guess. Um, and then, there may be a thing with shipping fees who, that maybe Spark is bur burned, but Sparklet is just something you want to get. And you can actually run it out to other players to help them build their buildings. And they, they will pay um, a certain amount, like an Epix or a USD, for renting that Sparklet. So also, Sparklet is going to be on the Ethereum blockchain. It's going to have a new token, ERC-20. Um, and I mentioned powering your cars might be a thing. Upgrading your manufacturing facility may be a reason you have to like burn some sparklet on um, building those inside legits. All right, so let's go on to some more things about property cards. When you click on someone's property card or your own card, there are a few things you can see. But 
what you might think, be thinking about is how do I build something or how do I stake Spark since we just talked about it. And I'm just going to let you know that when you want to build something, you have to click on the property card on the, the your property <laughs> block that you want to build. It'll bring up the property card. And then on that property card, there is a place where you can click on manage. So you click to manage and it will bring up build, decorate, arrange, or demolish. So if you want to build a property, that's how you do it. If you want to decorate it with an ornament, you'll go here as well. If you want to arrange things on your land, you'll go there. And if you want to knock down a structure, you'll go there to demolish it. Don't do that by accident, though. So there's the build. Once you press build, the construction is going to, going to start. When people click on your construction, they can actually add to the staking um, you know, by putting their own stake. So it says stake your spark. Then like tells you how much you're staking. And that's basically what people do. And you can see this construction time. The more spark that's on the build, the faster it builds. That's another reason people really like spark or really want it because they want to build things fast and a little bit, you know, having a little bit, it means you're building really slowly. I'm also pointing out here that that visit fee we talked about earlier, when you send to someone's property, do check those visit fees because if you click on their property, it will bring up their fee to visit and you can see if it's 25 or 50 or just too much for you. So you can also see your own and you click on those three dots right there and that'll bring up your own ability to set your visitor's fee, which you do want to set to the lowest if you're trying to attract those hunters. Um, but if you're trying to level up through a free play, then you want to have it to the highest to get it done faster. So people who are helping you don't have to travel to and send to your property a whole bunch more times than they would have to otherwise. All right. So this is what you, oh, one more thing on this page is offers. Sometimes people will um, want to offer something for a property you're selling. If you don't want people lowballing you, you can go to your offers and set your offer threshold. So maybe you want them to only be able to offer 100% or more then you can set it there. But maybe you're willing to take 95% offers or offers that are 5% less, then you can set it there. So that's where you go to actually um, set your offers. All right, so how to earn an upland is probably a big question a lot of people have. Like, how do I actually earn this game? How do I how do I get epics? Um, so these are the ways. You can sell properties, which again, you have to reach upland or to be able to sell properties. So that's the thing. Um, if you are opening or around during a new city opening, flipping during high speculation right after that city opens is one of the best ways to make epics and or earn money if you can even sell after a few days for a USD when you reach certain statuses. So that high speculation time is a really big thing. Uh, to, I'll talk about more in just a little bit. You can collect yield earnings from your own properties. It's kind of like rent. You can treasure hunt, um, take that risk. You can visit. Um, sorry, you can get visits and have people actually send you send to your property to earn that visit fee. You might have the meta venture sales eventually, where you're opening up your own business and you're getting all of this, all of this epics and dollars from being a metaverse mogul. You can also collect your bonuses by filling in those collections and getting epics that way. Having collect properties and collections also boosts gives a little boost on the yield that you get from those properties or the rent you can complete missions to get you know to get some more epics and you can also go take part in layer two games where they're they're selling assets in those games for epics so about selling properties location 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 it is really crucial to buy properties in the right area um New players often make a mistake of buying properties just anywhere or they think in their mind, oh, who wouldn't want a property over here? But they're wrong. Nobody wants a property over there. So <laughs> people in Upland usually want properties that are in collections. They want properties that are large enough for factories. They're looking for those big lots. Um, they want properties that are in a node that players are building up and working for that collection status together. They want properties that are on the waterfront because there are a lot of waterfront collectors. Some people are out there still collecting property tags like McDonald's, um, I don't know, who else, gas stations. I'm not sure if people are going to continue doing that, but there are people who are out there looking for things like that. So if your property has a McDonald's tag, that might be a, way, a reason that you are able to sell it. But if your property is not in a collection, it is not large enough for a factory or meta venture, it's not in a node, and it's not on the waterfront, it may not sell forever. All right, so kind of keep that in mind. This is a game. It is play to earn, not play and get. So 
there is a there is a loser component where you might lose you might buy properties that just sit and sit and sit and no one ever wants them so make sure when you buy you have a reason to buy that property that you either want to hold it and keep it forever or you really know you've got yourself a collection property or something worth selling to other players in the game that's going to attract them size is a component that you're looking at because sometimes like you know people are like why would i spend ten thousand upix on your little tiny property that i can't even build a structure on when i can spend ten thousand property or ten thousand on this property and i can build a structure and open a meta venture so size does matter price matters how you're pricing is you know a big part of how you're going to sell like if you're the lowest price a lot of times that's going to be a good thing people are going to want to buy that cheaper property if it's not it's the lowest in the area there's like sometimes a race to the floor where people are trying to, too hard to go too low too fast and it ruins the floor and the floor is a way that people talk about like the, the lowest pro lowest prices in the city so the floor can be like really bad where it goes down really fast because too many people are trying to race to the bottom so you just kind of be aware of that um selling at the right time is key and then there are improvements improvements are structures like factories people love factories um, buying factories um, a showroom so any type of like meta venture building you can just construct and save people the spark hours and then wrap that into your price that's also a way to sell your property like people like looking for an apartment building because it can hold a lot of um assets have been for meta venture and you're build one yourself and now you're going to sell it for usd that is a way to sell your property. So I encourage you to use research, um, to research on third-party apps like upxland.me. Upxland.me is my favorite. It's where I go all of the time. There's also Upland Optimizer, which is good for its own reasons. So if there's like different ones you wanna search out, but upxland.me has been my go-to. You might be thinking, oh, I, how do I want to, how do I know if I can build a property on this, on this property lot? There is a playground right now on Upland's website. You can go to Upland and you can go to this like, playground.ugc or something like that. But it's on their, it's, there's links on their site for you to get to the playground. And on that playground, you can put in the address of a property that you might want to buy, but you don't want to buy it yet unless you know it can fit a certain structure. Go to the playground, go to that address in their, in their, on their playground, and then you can see what structures might fit. This is really helpful because otherwise you might end up buying properties where you wanted to build something, but you weren't able to because of the size or the, it was just not built correctly. And then interiors are coming soon, um, which is something to keep in mind of when, you know, wanting to have structures because I imagine you won't have an interior unless you actually have a structure on your property. So another reason to want to build. All right, so new city minting. The new city minting is truly an art. There's things that go into it that you really have to study. And you have to practice. Um, you hone that skill and get better better each time. I have a video. I, like I said, I'm going to link it in the description. I hope I didn't forget to do it. So as long as I did, it's there. If I didn't, you can search it up on YouTube. But there's definitely a lot that goes into new city minting that you want to make sure you catch up with as far as like learning. Um, do the research prior to an opening. Read Discord. Discord's great where people are speculating because you, you want to buy those properties that people are speculating on because after the new city opens, that's when you can sell to people who are speculating. And if you've got something that they wanted that they think is going to be collection, then you can sell to them. So what happens is, is that sometimes during a city opening, collections are not released. They don't tell you what the collections are yet. There's like a vanilla opening. Um, and so basically when that happens, um, or a non-vanilla opening, I can't remember which it is, but basically when they don't tell you what collections are going to be until the week after the opening, there's a whole week where people are speculating on what areas are going to be collections. And during that time, it's a good time to sell to those people if you have things in those areas. Um, so always do your research. Like I said, check the Upland General Chat, YouTube. YouTube's great for um, videos on like new city, new city openings. Um, there's other players who have guides. There's like the bananas guides. Um, you can find him on, on Discord as well. And then you can just Google popular areas. But you want to make sure also that you collect your earnings prior to the new release because you might have a lot of earnings of yields sort of saved up. But if you wait until the city opens, you cannot collect your earnings right away. They lock it for a bit. So always collect before that release. Um, and also you can position your block explorer about 15 minutes ahead of time by sending to their launch properties 
or um, <laughs> sometimes sending back to the train station that allows your block explorer to float across the map to get to ideal areas that you think might be collections. Be prepared for lags for sure. Um, every city opening is a new trial. We hope we get it great, but sometimes there's major lags and you're trying to send to people's properties and it's just not working and you just get so upset. Um, you want to have enough sins on hand because you're trying to send to other people who purchase property in certain areas to get into an area initially when minting. For example, if there's a property I want in Hollywood and I, I want to send there for the opening, I can't actually send to anything that's not minted. So I'm hoping for some other person to be in Hollywood area, mint a property there. I can then send myself to that person's property and then everything near that becomes available for me to buy because you can only purchase a property within your vicinity of your block explorer. So that's something I probably should have mentioned earlier. You can only purchase where you are near for minting, um, but for secondary, once you're buying from others, you don't have to be in the city at all to purchase from them. You can be anywhere and just go to purchase um, by going to their address and clicking to buy it. Um, so also, start from a browser for new city openings. I found that the app is actually slower, like the green or the the, the green light when you can actually start minting um, appears faster. I found on browsers. Don't FOMO during a new city release, meaning if you only have a certain amount of Upix, don't start thinking, I should just buy a whole bunch more Upix to buy all these properties because I'm going to miss out on deals. Don't do that. Um, property prices do drop uh, significantly, so especially on the USD side. So you might as well just wait till later rather than buying Upix from the store because you might find better deals on with your USD after the opening. So don't FOMO. Sell high during high speculation. <laughs> I should say sell high. But you make the most money during that high speculation, like I said. And people are thinking, oh, you, maybe they're getting a deal by buying your property right now because it's going to be a collection, whatever they're thinking. So you want to sell at that moment. It's like hot potato. You want to get it out of your hands while it's hot. Because otherwise, you might be sitting there with left in the cold holding that bag. Okay, so the yield earnings is a way that you can earn Upix in this game, but there's things that go along with this, all right? <laughs> so first off, you can see what a, what kind of earnings you can get from a property. By clicking on its card, it'll show you its monthly earnings. It'll also show you its UP2 size, that's the property size, its purchase price or owner. But you can see where it says boosted earnings. So when it's in a collection, it makes more. <coughs> Excuse me. So you definitely want to, get these properties into collections and make sure you put your higher earning properties into collections and not the lower earning ones. Right now, Upland's doing a thing where there are monthly challenges or seasonal challenges, sorry, seasonal challenges that begin like June 1st to June 15th. And then it's like the first to the 15th of every month, I think. Um, but whatever the case is, you have to complete these challenges, a certain number of them to get your yield to be a certain amount. So right now, it's at completing five tasks out of the list they give you from the challenges to get your yield to be a 14.7 multiplier. People who do all of the tasks get a 15.2 multiplier, which is just a 5% more. So maybe it's not worth it for everyone to try to go for all of them, but getting the 14.7 is definitely doable. And you can see they tell you things like, hey, log in for 25 days, maintain a streak, logging in every day, seven days, mint three properties during the season meaning like go go out there and mint start five standard treasure hunts those are the ones that i'll show you we we'll talk about those a little bit more later but you want to do those um meta venture explorer visit three be shops remember those orange dots i talked about on the map that you want to go ahead and visit those apply Gen genesis ornament we'll talk about that in a little bit too master builder complete the construction of five structures to showcase your architectural pro prowess so constructing properties, economy con contributor, burn or exchange three items, engaging it with Upland's dynamic economy. So the burning, we're going to talk about that too. Um, community grower, earn a referral bonus by referring others. We already talked about the referral things. Savvy shopper, buy three items from MetaVenture to support and engage with the community. Those are those orange dots. And a frequent flyer, take five flights. And we talked about travel already. All right, so collecting Sparklet and Upix during treasure hunting is another way you can earn in this game. 
Sparklet comes in different amounts. When you hit a treasure chest, it can be 0.2. That's the highest you can get. Or 0.1. That's the highest you can get from. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm lying. 0.2 is not the highest you can get. It's the highest you can get on a standard hunt. But if you're doing competitive hunts, competitive hunts, you can get more spark. So the competitive ones you can see, it says charging, charging. Those are competitive and it'll tell you a time when they start. And if you do, if you do win spark in a competitive hunt, it's likely you can win more than that. But a standard hunt, 0.2 is, 0.02 is the highest and 0.01 is for the lower tier cities. Rutherford is where I suggest new players start off for learning to have a treasure hunt. It's a good small city where you can just get the grasp, like get the grasp of what treasure hunting is. And then as you feel comfortable with that, go ahead and move on over to a place that spin, pays out more, such as Santa Clara. A great city for treasure hunting, not, not too big, and you get a point oh two payout. But, you know, if you're looking to earn Upix, you're not worried about, you're not thinking about Spark, where you're like, how can I get more Upix, right? Well, these treasure hunts also can pay out pretty big bonuses. Um, the thing is, is you might be spending more than you're getting, so you want to make sure that you know how to hunt before you take the risk. But they do, you can get some big Upix chest um, treasure hunting. You want a map when you treasure hunt. So a map is something like this that you see with all these different properties. Those blue circles are all the properties that I own in LA. So your map will show you where all your properties are. Those blue circles will be your, your, your properties. What a map or a web is, is where you have properties placed throughout a city so that you can send to your properties to get into those areas without paying visit fees. So a good treasure hunter has a map of properties where there's properties like in every neighborhood of that city. And then even more hunters maybe have properties like every other block. I mean, like they're super like compact and concentrated so that they can just hop around from their own properties without paying visit fees and not, not having to pay a send or use a send because you are limited in the number of sends you get and the number of sends you can collect per day. Although you can buy them from the um, the store, the Upland store. But a send is that paper airplane. When you press send, you're gonna use one of those airplanes and it's gonna go down and you have to collect more to send as you run out. So never use your last airplane when you're treasure hunting. Always save one to send yourself to another property where you can find another send and keep on going. So sending, once again, is how you travel from one property to another. But when you're sending to other people's properties, you have to pay their visit fee. But if you send to your own property, you are traveling for free. So as a treasure hunter, the more properties you have, the better treasure hunting is for you because you're not paying fees and you're collecting bonuses from the winnings that you're getting. Back to that setting the visitor's fee. So if you go to your property car by clicking on it, when it comes up, there's three little dots on the top right. You can click on that and that's where you can go to set your fee. You can also click to set this fee for all properties so that you can make all your properties at once the lowest or the highest visit fee possible. Um, or you can set it just for that property and tell somebody, this is my expensive property sin right here and keep your other properties low so that treasure hunters can come to that one. So if you're trying to do a free play and you have three properties, Two properties you can set to the lowest possible visiting fees, and that's going to attract the hunters, and you might get more visits that way, even though it's lower. And But then you have one property that you have as the highest max, and that's the property where you're soliciting visits, and you're telling people, visit this property so I can get visits. Okay, you can also earn by opening up a business, and that's one of my favorite ways to get paid in Upland is selling my own stuff. So you can open up map asset shops, you can open up car showrooms, you can open up a BE block explorer shop, structure ornament shop, variety legit shop, which is like wearables and things that just kind of don't have a place. Um, totems are in variety legit shops. Oh no, totems are in map mass assets. I lied. Um, but NFL, NFL, P, NFL PA legit, which is like your, your American football legit. And then we have football legit, which are like our actual soccer legit. If you're in America, you think of it as soccer. Um, and then we also have eventually that people are going to be able to earn like through Uber and also like transport services where you're like paying people to take them someplace or you're paying, getting paid. Sorry, people, you're not paying people. You're getting paid to transport people or services or for things as a service. So I definitely encourage you to open up your own shop. If you don't know how to design 3D models, but you still want to sell things, again, you can hook up with the Ready Asset team. 
They can build your models for you to put in your shops because to get royalties, you have to be the manufacturer. So the, the actual royalties off of things as they continue to sell every time they sell, you have to be the manufacturer. So just kind of be aware. Collection bonuses is another way you can get the epics that I mentioned earlier. And you go to the little three dots, remember, and then you'll pick up, click on collections. And when you click on collections from there, there's a little globe, which you could pick the city. The bottom line is there's lots of, every city has its own collections. There's some standard collections. And one of them is the newbie collection. When you get one property, you can fill it in. Um, three properties on the same street is another way you, you can get pro um, a bonus as a new player. Then having five properties in the same city is your next bonus as a new player. So you're going to be aiming for that. You're going to be aiming for one property, fill in the newbie. Three properties in the same street, fill in that. And then there's like City Pro where you have five properties in the same city. So if you are a new person, you might as well buy five properties in the same city initially. Buy those three properties on the same street if you can. And that's where you, you can level up. And you can see how much epics you kind of get. It's not a whole lot. Some of them are better than others. Some collections are pay out a lot of epics, and you just have to see um, if you can collect them. So the mission center, I knew I was going to get back to this. Okay, so mission center, we mentioned missions are a way to get epics. So there's actually like right here, travel to a new city is 3,000 epics. However, traveling does cost, but traveling to a new city can be very cheap if you take the train. For example, if you take the train from Santa Clara to San Francisco, you're not going to pay as much as if you're taking an international flight. So doing these missions definitely is worth it um, to get more epics. And you can also get to the missions tab by on the on the on the right hand side where you see your epics earnings accruing. Um, there's a little flag with a mountain that is the mission center. All right, layer two games. This is another way that you can earn epics, and this is because these different places offer opportunities where you can sell assets within their games for epics. Upland Kingdoms is one of my favorite layer two games. Um, if you like castle type of games or like battle games where people attack with their armies, um, this is the game for you. And then your army has to be fed and able to maintain. So there's like foods in the game, so you can sell. You can be a person who just makes food and chooses not to participate in the battle part, and you just sell your foods for epics. So there's tons of different things. There's lots of uh, other Layer 2 games on the horizon that are not even out right now that are probably going to also offer tons of ways for you to earn some epics. So you just have to stay apprised of what's new. Again, checking out the Upland Discord, being in the Upland chat, and just staying up to date with the community is the best way to find out about these things. There's this thing called burning. This is not about, this is like a way you can burn you can burn your 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 nfts for other rewards so sometimes there are competitions like like you saw for the challenge this this month there's like i think if you burn three things for getting your yield increase higher so it's up to you whether or not you burn but if you burn an asset it's it's gone like that asset has gone away and it becomes a new asset but sometimes you might burn in the wrong order and lose your asset so be very careful with burning it's dangerous um you may lose out completely on your asset without any other asset coming to you if you don't follow the instructions. So if you choose to burn, make sure you are very well apprised of the actual procedure that Upland wants you to follow to get the new asset. Seasonal ornaments have become a part of Upland's gamification, which has also been pretty fun. You can see it's also having ornament as part of the yield challenge as well, but there are also just like other challenges where you might get more spark or get more epics just because you're you're decorating your properties with a certain type of ornament. So buying ornaments is what investing in ornaments, like the type of ornament you might need, might be a part of your gameplay that you want to just like keep in mind because and also you may want to open up a ornament meta venture where you sell these things to other players. Racing with or without stakes is also a a thing in Upland. It's under the settings tab where you can go to the racing. But if you're trying to win some epics and you're willing to gamble a little bit, then you can go stake on a race, become a good racer with your car, and maybe you keep earning a lot of epics that way if you are a good racer and you find a lot of people in the community who are willing to pay a stakes race. Um, keep in mind when you do get your own car and you start traveling, you can travel without using the planes and the other things by, without paying any fees. Um, but there are some um, wait times that are going to go into that. So be careful, like traveling across the map by car. It might take you three days to reach certain places. And once you plus 
to go. You can't get out of your travel. You'll be stuck in it. So very be very careful with job traveling um, in your own private transportation and make sure it's not too slow. But also planes are coming soon. So that's going to cut down some travel time too for people who have planes. But traveling um, may also, like I said, be a thing where your people are paying you to transport them. And that will be another earning avenue in this play to earning game. Totems. Um, totems are pre-life and upland. And right now you shouldn't, as a new player, you can probably hear about them and you'd be like, what are totems? So they are these NFTs that are pre-life. These are not yet living thing. Upland is testing out how it's going to work. Um, and right now these new pre-life forms give us protum. Protum is like the thing you need to feed your, your totem. But eventually how much protum you have is going to be substituted out or switched out for stem. And stem is going to be the new currency or whatever, the new thing for feeding life forms when life forms are actually in upland. But right now, protum is what you want. And then eventually that protum will be turned into stem. So to get protum, you have to have a life form, a totem. And the totem itself has cycles. And when it's in a cycle, right now that one says not, a, not in cycle. When it's in cycle, you, can, you have to feed it at certain intervals. And then it will produce for you protum. So the goal of this game is to make sure you're producing a lot of protum from your life form. Um, my, my, I hope this works for you, but my thing is the best thing that ever came out with totems was myupland.info because there they would tell you, you can put in like your username and they would tell you exactly when your totem has to be fed. So knowing that is so great because then you're not missing out on opportunities to feed your totem when you should. And there's also penalties when you're not feeding at the right times. So myupland.info, definitely go there and join their disc or not the discord, but go to, um, go to their website and start using them right away. Once you do get your own totems. All right. So, this was not around earlier for us. And so now you are, if you are new, you have the benefit of this unless it changes because Upland said it can change things. But these right here, this is showing you if you do get a certain totem or you want to see what kind of totem you might, you should get. This is showing you the type of payout cycles that each totems have. And when you can expect to see them actually start doing their payouts. Initially, you may be spinning protum and you're, you'll see your protum is not giving you back what you spent to feed it. And you feel like, I'm losing, I'm losing. Well, that is because they are on this little cycle. So you can see the seven days, actually, for most people, other than one person who has that um, special llama, the one-of-a-kind llama, llama totem, for most people, their their earnings are going to start about seven days at the soonest, and that's if they're on the wave. But if they're not on the wave, the next soonest is going to be the mild step. And then after that, you can see it goes to sharp step, and then hockey stick, and then... Oh, wait, I forgot linear is around seven days as well. So you can see that what's happening is with a certain type. So say you have a toucan, a toucan um, or python. Well, then the rewards are going to grow consistently over time. It's going to be a direct predictable climb, much like a walking up a gentle slope. So you just see it growing a little bit each time. Um, really picking up, actually starting to grow around seven or eight days. The toucan is, I think, eight days and pythons at seven days. Um, and then the the palm tree and the cheetah, you have to wait almost like to day 23 before you really start seeing a payout. So you, you might be like getting really frustrated because you feel like I'm losing totem by feeding this thing or I'm losing my protum by feeding my totem. So a strategy might be just to make sure you're feeding just a little bit so that you're not missing cycles, but you're not actually feeding them it, its optimal amount until day 23 when it's going to actually start really paying out. Um, because I think, I think that people were saying you don't have to feed it optimally until it's, um, it is until it's like, uh, going to be paying out. We'll see. But here's what you can kind of take this away where you can see which animals have which curves and take a screenshot if you need to there are penalties i just talked about that where your base shapes are going to determine the penalties so for the hexagon i think that's a hexagon it's like the worst one for each each spin opportunity you miss you're losing 
um, you're going to lose protum from each of your future ones. The hexagon, sorry, the pentagon is where you, if you miss an opportunity, then you're going to lose like a shortened interval of your cycle, which is the same as losing protum because you're not going to get it when you could have. The square, you can miss up to five spin intervals without any without any penalty. So it's a little bit more lenient. But once you hit the six, you're done. It's going to end your cycle. So you really don't want to hit that six one on a square base. And then for the circle, it's really lenient. And it's the one that's like it's it's telling you you can do whatever you need. Um, and oh, my DJ mode just went off. Um, you don't have to worry. Most lenient, no penalties for being missed at all. So I think that's pretty great. If I were looking for a totem, I would definitely want one with a round base if I could get one. All right, let's go on to the next. And this is just a screenshot to show all of the animals, all the different types. And here you can see your the frequency. So this is showing you where you actually have to... Um, where you, when you have to actually feed them. So for example, the orange one, every eight hours would be an interval for orange. And remember we're talking about missing those intervals. So if you have one that you start off, you awake it at 12 o'clock and, and that's noon, that means at 12 o'clock midnight, it's gonna need to be fed. And if you're not awake, you're gonna miss that interval. That's why these times become really important for people. Brown is every, tw oh, sorry, eight hours is not, 12 to 12. That's brown. <laughs> brown is 12 to 12. Eight hours is even sooner. Um, 16 hours is willy nilly because I can't. I, once you give me like what's 16 hours from now, I do not know what time it is 16 hours from now. It's hard to calculate. So, again, why using my upland info um, is really something to use because it tells you exactly what time to feed them. Um, and then the better ones, you go out, prolong your cycles. So, like blue, three days later, you feed it. Every three days you're feeding it. So, hey, every three days at noon I feed my, my totem. It's, that's when it needs to be fed. That would be ideal. Um, or four to eight hours, um, which is the rare, rarest, and get you a nice, what is that? 36 hours, it seems like, I thought that was, oh, no, that's a day and a half, not three days. My bad, 24 hours. <laughs> Plus another 12 is 36, so a day and a half. And then you have the rarest, which is two days. All right, so um, that is what you got here for these protums and totems, and that's the spill on that. So if you do get into upland and you want to get involved in totems, there are people who sell these, and you can find them on the channel of um, Discord, which we'll talk about in a second, but also in MetaVentures over at the Map Assets. That's where you will find these totems being sold. Wearables are another thing you might want to buy in upland. Eventually, um, players should be able to actually design wearables and sell them too out of their own meta ventures. But currently, you might want to collect some wearables so that you can sell them in shops as well, or you might want to just like look better in your avatar. Um, but these wearables are sold in the variety legit shop. So if you want to sell wearables, you'll need a variety legit shop. There are other things to do in Upland um, besides just selling things. Um, there are live events, so you might want to check out when there might be live events held. Um, the Community Central is open. You can go visit this property and hang out with other people in the metaverse. And there's like things that take place where you, if you show up, you can win epics. So just by being a participant in these community events can be ways to earn. I mentioned that BST or BSTS asset channel earlier. This is where Upland has allowed people to post their assets so people can see what's out there for sale. So I highly encourage you to use upxland.me, uplandoptimizer.com, ablend.me, and my upland info is your third-party sites to see what is being priced um, for what. Um, ablend.me has like different meta ventures that you can see what's being sold in certain shops. Upxland.me is my place for just seeing what kind of properties are being sold and how much properties cost. Um, I also really like ablend.me for finding scent. As a new player, you may have a really difficult time finding sins so that you can keep traveling and doing treasure hunting. They're like little paper airplanes on the map. But ablen.me, if you sign up for them, they literally give you the addresses. And so you, you know how you can use property search inside the game. You can come here, get the address of where a send is located, 
enter it into the property search in Upland and go directly to send yourself to that send so you're not searching all over because they can be hard to find, and especially in certain cities, they're like, they seem like there's no sins around ever. Um, all, there's the Upland store. I encourage you, if you're willing to put money in, to buy on the secondary market instead, um, except for your first Upland purchase, which I think you should buy maybe 50,000 in Upix if you're willing to do it, and get that extra 25,000 bonus. And then after that, I would not buy Upix from the store, it's, I don't encourage it because, I again, I think you can earn Upix better by buying properties from other players and then selling those properties for Upix. Um, but you can also find SINs in this, in this store for sale, 99 cents for 10 SINs. This becomes handy during new city openings and you like run out of SINs and you're trying to like go to an area that's highly um, speculated and you don't you can't get there, you're out of SINs, just buy some. Um, there are other bundles here for sale. But this is what you can check and see what Upland's selling. Um, there's this pass also called the Genesis. This one's the Genesis Season Pass. So you're selling these season passes. These are for aesthetics only. You get like certain property decorations, but they you can't sell them. Um, and so it's just for looks. But if you want to look special or participate in these season passes, then that's for you. And then right now, Genesis Week is on sale. And it's a live party event, a two-day celebration in person, but a whole week celebrations outside of the two-day event. Um, it's super fun. Definitely worth attending. All right, that's it for me. I have my own brand, by the way. It's called Top Boss. And if you could just put a hashtag, not confused, to support me, I would super um, appreciate that. Just ha hashtag Top Boss. Hashtag not confused. Just to let people know, you know that my brand is not a Nazi brand like Hugo Boss, but it is instead a woman-owned minority brand, top boss, my brand. Um, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do me a solid. It costs nothing to subscribe, but it really helps me out. And that's it. That's how to plan a plan 2024, going almost into 2025, or like six months away or a living going. July, August, September, October, November, December. Yes, we're, like, we're halfway through the year. So yeah, um, I hope you liked it and I will see you guys next time.